I like to take a few minutes to talk about preventative care of your watch, how to protect your watch, how to maintain it, how to get the most out of your investment. When it comes to aesthetic maintenance and movement maintenance and, and servicing of a watch, those are three different categories. Aesthetic maintenance is cleaning the watch and taking care of the external components of the watch. Maintenance service for the watch is changing the gaskets, maintaining the integrity of the water resistance of the watch, protecting the movement. Lastly, we have full service of the watch, which includes a complete disassembly of the movement and the case, replacing all the seals, the full service of the movement, and, and therefore returning that watch to as close as we can to the new condition. As a watchmaker, I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about things you can do as a consumer and the watch owner to both protect your watch, maintain your watch, and get the best use out of your watch in between service intervals. The first thing I can say, and anyone that's, that's seen me do the shows, um, knows I am vehemently against automatic winders. What that does, it keeps the watch at full power. It puts more strain on your automatic components. And the only luxury it gives you is you pick the watch up off there and you put it on and it's gonna be relatively on time because there's always gonna be some kind of air on the watch. It's gonna be running fast, it's gonna be running slow. You're still gonna to have to reset the watch in most cases if you take it off that automatic winder. The only, the only advantage it gives you is the watch is fully wound. But again, what I see as a watchmaker is it puts so much more wear and tear on those automatic components, keeping that mainspring at full power that it's actually wearing that watch out as it's on that winder. You have a lot of watches in rotation. That's great. I have a lot of watches that I put in rotation too. When I'm not wearing them, I set them down. I let that mainspring wind down. I let everything relax. When I pick that watch up, I wind it. I give it a little bit of life. I put it on my wrist. If it's an automatic, I'll give it 10, 20 winds. I'll let myself, you know, my daily wear um, wind it back up. If it's a manual wind watch, take it off, let it relax, let it stop. Pick it up, wind it, set it, and you're good to go. You're gonna have a lot less wear and tear. You're gonna have a lot less maintenance issues on that watch. You're gonna have, you're gonna give the watchmaker um, an easier service when that watch comes in. You're not letting your watch winder enjoy the watch. You're letting yourself enjoy the watch. You're gonna have a longer service interval if you don't use a watch winder. One of the biggest things we see too is a call from somebody, hey, I bought a new watch, it fogged up. My first question is, what did you do to it? Uh, if you watched the last season, the wrap up of the last season, when we were actually, we took a watch that was water resistant that had no moisture in it and I was able to make it fog up. The reason that watch fogged up is because there's actually moisture in the small amount of oxygen, the small amount of air that's captured in here. So it's a temperature change that'll actually form condensation on the crystal. So as long as that condensation goes away, dissipates in a minute, you're okay. The key there is to avoid drastic temperature changes. Uh, you don't want to go into a hot tub with a watch. You don't want to go into a steam room with a watch. I don't like wearing watches in the shower because of the high pressure water that comes out. If there's any leaks, any degradation to the crystal or to the, to the gaskets of that watch, water's going to find its way in. Water's death to watches. Maintain your watch, maintain your gaskets, and you're going to get a longer lifespan out of your watch. It's always safest. If you have to change the date, again, you have your automatic watch, you set it down, you didn't wear it for a week, you have to reset the date. The way I do it personally, and I'm a watchmaker, so you can listen to me or not, is you pick that watch up, you wind it, you go ahead and set the time and rotate it past 12 o'clock. Let that, either let the calendar change or see that you're at noon. If the calendar didn't change, then go ahead and use your quick set. Don't try to use your quick set between 10 and two. If you do that, you're actually forcing components. If, if you're, you're further along the wear cycle of that watch, if you're into three years or five years into that watch, you actually risk damaging components inside there and that'll result in a higher maintenance fee. Don't use your chronograph in or around water. If your watch is wet, don't use your chronograph. Uh, you run the risk of actually pumping water into the watch. You put one little drop of water in there, over time it's going to corrode the very delicate and, and precise components that are inside the watch. When you drop your watch, the jewels move and they actually spring back into, into position, protecting the balance. That's what they're designed to do. But you really don't want to drop your watch. I'm not saying anyone's going to do it on purpose, but if you drop your watch you know, by accident on a hard surface, have it checked. Something could have cracked. 
a crown, a tube could have cracked, which eventually is gonna allow water into that watch. A gasket could have shifted. A lot of things could have happened. The timing could be off on that watch. A lot of things could happen from a simple drop. I've seen watches dropped on carpets that are completely thrown out of beat and have broken crowns. So if you ever drop your watch, have it checked by a watchmaker. A common thing we see too is a broken crystal. Sapphire, while it's scratch resistant, is also very brittle. When a sapphire crystal breaks, it fractures into very, very tiny parts. You're gonna take it to your watchmaker. Your watchmaker is gonna tell you, you need a service. You're asking, why do I need a service? I just want the crystal replaced. Because you potentially have glass inside that movement. My recommendation is, if you ever break the crystal on your watch, immediately stop it. Pull the crown out if it has a hacking mechanism like Rolex does. Pull the crown out, stop that movement from running. That'll also protect your dial. You won't be dragging glass around the dial, scratching the dial. Another common concern we have with watches is magnetism. More and more watches are being made anti-magnetic. By anti-magnetic, it doesn't mean the watch is magnetic, it's less susceptible to magnetism. When a watch is magnetized, the first indication is it runs extremely fast. Why does it run fast? Because you're effectively taking that hairspring that's vibrating and you're shortening it because it's sticking together. That hairspring sticking together, it's making the watch run faster. It's almost like it's chattering inside there. So magnetism is one of the things. How do you, you don't normally get it magnetized by going through an airport, you know, metal detector, that's, that's uh, old wives tale. It's where you set the watch down. Rare earth magnets are very, very common in everyday life right now. Anything that has a clasp, a purse, um, an iPad case, anything that has a spring clasp on it can magnetize your watch if you set your watch down on it. So just be mindful as to where you put your watch, where you set it down. Most times if a watch is magnetized, we don't have to open it up. We can demagnetize it on the spot and, and it's fine. However, again, if you drop that watch, you run the risk of hooking a hairspring or, or doing more damage to it. When it comes to cleaning the watches, you can clean the watch under running water. I wouldn't recommend a shower. Regular running water because it comes out with less pressure than a shower. It's not forced through a little hole. Use a toothbrush, use a mild detergent. Towel dry your watch off. Um, I've seen, I actually saw a watch one time, I saw a Rolex that actually got eaten by a dog, passed through the dog, and the woman took the watch and put it in her dishwasher and ran it through the dishwasher and we serviced that watch and it actually came out fine. When it comes to maintaining your watch, the most important thing is maintain the gaskets and have your watch regularly serviced by a watchmaker that you trust. I'm Michael Michaels of Watchbox, and these are my views on how to properly care for your timepiece.